<laughs> How do everyone? Welcome back to the Potty Mouth Garden Show. Yes. Audrey, how are you, sir? Sir. Oh, my. <laughs> Very wow. good. Uh, is that what I say now? Shall I just you... um, hand in my resignation now as a combat? Okay. <laughs> how, how are you, anyways? Are you good? I'm good. We've just been giggling here. It's great. Thank uh, you. Oh, well, listen, thank you for coming on. A good, good show in, in stall as well. Jess, how are you? Good, 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 good. good. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Got lots to ch chat about today on this garden. A glorious day, mind you, on my up the northeast of England. It is absolutely gorgeous. Warm blue sky. Not like yours, JB, yeah? No? no absolutely grey and miserable. Oh, never. Yeah. Right, right. Well, JB, this will bring a little bit of blue sky into your heart today. <laughs> <laughs> so, we all need it. We all need Jimmy, it. What's Monday. been happening then, gardening wise? Then, well, how how are you doing? What's what's going on in your little gardening world? Well, the greenhouse is pretty much finished. <laughs> what? Yay! Yay! <laughs> this did not take as long as what I thought, mind you, JB. So that's just that it thing wasn't that, too that's bad. in itself. You didn't look these videos. Yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, everyone, I... everyone, mind you, thanks you, JB, for that. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to be a bit more reasonable with this one. But um, no, it's pretty much there. There's still a few final touches. But in my last video, I did say, I'm just, let's just say it's finished. <laughs> I don't want to drag it on <laughs> any longer than uh, than it needs to be, you know. Mine, it's, you, you can't, I'm not saying you're, you're pushing close, but, you know, like, the, the, it's it's amazing how the weeks tick over, mm -hmm. you know, and like you say, this greenhouse is going to be so important to you kind of this season. So at least you can kind of, and now it's think about in... sewing and you know what I mean and everything like that. That's it. It's just kind of in the nick of time for me. I've just got these uh, this new staging put in, which is really fancy. It's quite nice. And um, one of the bits is like a seedling tray shelf, basically. Oh. So it's oh. some shelves, and then the whole thing is full of seed trays, which is just now like intimidating. It's really daunting. It's like <laughs> fill it. I need to fill them up. Yeah, fill them up. Is so, this? Um... Is this? I'm, I'm not being cheeky, JB. Is this? Is this um, bought with your own money? Was it a little free? It is. You... No, it was bought Whoa, with my own money. Yeah, hell. it was bought with my own money. They're um, they're quite a new company, so they haven't got like much of a social media presence or anything like that. Well, to be honest, like I've, I've noticed when I was doing mine, this is why I'm asking because staging's really quite expensive. Do you know what it's I mean? Like, expensive. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's like little add-ons. You know, when you're getting your car service and do you need like an oil? Do you want this? Do you want that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> So all these little add-ons, or or... yeah, it was it wasn't cheap, but it was um it was about right for the the kind of normal market price. But it looks like a really high quality stuff. And since putting it together, I'm like, I do not regret sp splashing out a little bit. So will this staging, JB? Will this be like a permanent, or will you have to like take it out, take it down to to you know once the start, once the pro, well, obviously the produce is going to be growing fantastic. <laughs> will you have to take it all out this staging? Should be. No, I'm going to leave it in. So one one part, um, one half of the greenhouse now is just the shelving. You know, so the staging. It's three tiers. It's just going to it's going to have stuff on it, like a potting potting area and stuff. You know, it, you accumulate a lot of stuff on the allotment. Oh yeah, and it will be full very very shortly. I'm sure. The um the actual seedling trays will probably stay up as well. Um, but you can they can take quite a lot of weight. Um, the company was saying that they'd put bags of gravel on them just to see if it would hold the weight. Um, and it did, which I was quite right, impressed by. Right. Um, you know, for just like some plastic trays. Who, Don't do I that mean, at home. Can you, can you remember the company, Jimmy? By all means, yeah, yeah, give so them it's a little... The, it's called Copa Grey. Um, right. They're in the process of trying to get a link set up. So um, right. I think I've got a call with them later. But like I say, they're quite new to it. But um, they kind of started selling in the middle of 2023. Um, so they spent a few years before that doing a lot of R and D, kind of producing the product, and they're they're really happy with it now. And sort of, I saw them on Instagram adverts, and it really, it really worked. <laughs> it really, really worked. It really got under my skin, and I was like, I could see that in my new kind of rebuild greenhouse. Really honestly, but for some whatever reason, Instagram gets it with me with adverts. Do you know what I mean? It's like way better than Google. You know, I mean, I don't go on Facebook, but just. Exactly what I, I don't know, obviously listening or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just like they hit the nail on the head and nine times out of ten, I've bought something in the middle of the night that's coming from China, you know what I mean? And this this is the last, you know, and I've never used it yet and I bought it. 
Was I showing you this? This is like a timer for the show. Oh, very good. Yeah, you put well, it on. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, right. We've got an hour. We've got we've got fifty nine minutes to go. Then <laughs> hang in. Yes, it won't be that long. And do you know what I mean? I see that. I went. Oh, that's what we need. That's and, very good. I've had to blow the dust off it there, so I'll put that there. Actually. <laughs> there. <laughs> but yes, my point was um, they can take a lot of weight. So later on in the season, they will probably get some bigger pots on. Probably not my chilies or anything like that, but they're super customizable. Yeah. And it's just a couple of screws if you want, because there's like there's five stages on the the, the seed trays. So um, later on, you can kind of take two out, and then mm-hmm. you'll have three with a bit more room and that kind of thing. So I have, quite customizable. Um, I've got one of those uh, seed racks from the old greenhouse um that has i think it's only got four it's like the top one's head height so they're quite big it only takes two seed trays each level it's not long like your one um but i found it really really tricky but i can't put a seed tray on each level even though they're about this far apart because the light just doesn't get in there so i I do like one on the top and then leave that one and then one on Mm. the one on the bottom they're really where yes, where is, where have you got this, Jess? Then is this like in a so in the greenhouse gonna... polytunnel? Oh, here at home. Well, I've got it here. You see, and I was just about to say that if you've got it in a greenhouse and you've got light coming from the back as well, it'll probably be so much better. But where okay. I've got it, it's it's next to a window, but then there's a wall at the back, and so it's got light coming in from like three sides. But that back, just having that one like back side, has um yeah really affects it. That's interesting. Jess, that's ex- that's exactly that's exactly like mine. You know what I mean? I've got like the three in, or I will have eventually the three in the the little greenhouse, but I've got a back wall, and yeah. again, it's like you I sneak them on the shelves, but you can tell which ones are on the top and which ones are getting not much light. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or which have to be rotated and everything like that. So, so you don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, and then until you like move your move them around, and then all the plants are growing at this angle. And then the ones, and then the ones at the back are this big, and the ones at the front are like that. You know, it's like yeah very very interesting i sort of i said in in my last video that it wasn't a full review so we'll see how they go <laughs> we'll see how they go through the they season and if, if light's an issue yeah, yeah they're they're great i mean that's, that's the the beauty though as well jb you, you, you're doing it you know what i mean and people can see and if they do kind of buckle and bend or or, or go a bit funky then you know it's your job to tell us, you know exactly. It's one of the. It's why I like sometimes buying things with my own money instead, mm. um, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. because it Definitely. really frees you from any obligation you feel like you might have to a company. You can be just go if it's crap. You could just feel completely free to tell everyone. Well, that's what you know. What I mean, I dare not say that the wheels have fallen off my electric bike. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of put someone in hospital, kind of thing. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Audrey, have you are you been busy or are you just sewing, 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 <laughs> sewing, sewing? You must be. It must be crammed now. Your oh yeah, it, I've already I haven't done had... any sewing. Well, not much. You know the the, the basics, oh. but I'm full already. Yeah, I'm up to uh, twenty flats at this point. So, I'm uh, yeah, something's got to give. Yeah. How was your potatoes? Because they were well, like big. They before. went outside. They went under. Uh, we have a shelf that sticks out that used to have a TV on it. Anyway, they went under there with clamp-on lights because I couldn't keep them. I need the space in the grow room here. So, uh, yeah, they they're on their own now out there. Did you did you see they've got lights outside? Like when... no, it's inside. It's in oh, the living right, right, right. Yeah, like but... I've started taking over other parts of the house. That's, yeah. that's the way you kid. You know, you got to do it. <laughs> What's um, this week then, Audrey? What was, the, like, say, the one the one seed that you wanted to get sown, you know, out of everything, which is the one you've you've enjoyed sown, looking forward to No, sewing? I really want to get to my tomatoes, and they didn't get done. So they'll probably be later. No, I have a dental appointment tomorrow. I'll do that. <laughs> Mine, this this is in it. It's now. This is the time. This I'm I'm quite happy to say. That I feel happy now. Probably tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, sown tomatoes. Do you know what I mean? I'm quite. But the hard part is you have to make your final decisions by oh. then. Well, Audrey, I have. And that's gone. where it gets rough. Mm-hmm. So I was very cheeky, and I asked Ian to send us all these tomato seeds. Oh my down. god! You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? It's perks of the job. 
So <laughs> those Black Moon ones, Amazing. I've got them. Now, I haven't got a clue yet so what to, to, what to um, show, but I'm definitely showing Audrey's the Brad's Atomic. Mm-hmm. What's that one? Verand- is it Ver- Veranda? Mm-hmm. Ver- Verdan? No, Red, F1. There was a uh, Cocktail Crush. Mm-hmm. This is that's the the, the crushing the um, burlesque. Everyone in my comments said that was a good one. The burlesque one, right? Put Light that, resistant, put, but very tasty. Uh, I think. I don't. It didn't take much for me to cheat and ride on the back of giants. Tomato <laughs> bliss. <laughs> I have this one is the probably one I'm gonna do. Toddler tomato toddler F one just because it looked a little bit. Remember I was saying. I'm forgetting the name of them now. You know the it's like a large cherry tomato. Which one? Oh, yeah, man. Which is one of the good old fashioned staple ones? It's a large money cherry. maker. No, oh. gardener's delight. delight or money maker. Gardener's delight. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's a kind of you know one like that. So I'll put that aside. Uh, Consuelo, is that how you pronounce what a name? it? That's F1. a lovely tomato. Oh, well, do that again. Keep that one. Because <laughs> didn't I say last week I was a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm being very <laughs> kind of frugal and I'm not. And then within, with it, did you see the comments within a few comments? Are you kidding, Tony? You'll never last. You'll never last. Yeah. So and more vivacious. Mm-hmm. So there is still. You've got still, loads of varieties in it. There's still, like, I would still like a, a, a good beef tomato. So if anybody's got any recommendations for a good. I've got, is it Marmand? I was about to say that. Yeah, Grand Oaks got one. that. I've got some. I've got some seeds of them somewhere kicking around, but so those are my seeds that I'm probably gonna like sow tomato wise. JB, what are you? Any I advice? Did, I so I did mine uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday? Day before what? yesterday, Saturday, yeah. Um, and. Yeah, I've got I've got no idea. I didn't make a list or anything. So I did it in a video and I've immediately forgotten everything I did, but quite a few of those growing local ones. I gave Bliss a miss. Nice. Um because uh they are yellow and yellow tomatoes scare me. Um because once upon a time I grew a tomato called Golden Sunrise and it was the most disgusting tomato I have ever oh. tasted in my life. It was like jelly. You know, oh. like it was like that horrible mealy texture. They were outside and I think they got like way too much rain, um, rainwater. So it's probably that, but it's enough to have put me off yellow tomatoes. Right. Oh, that's so such I don't think I've done any yellow ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I might... want to say, as a, as a recommendation for a massive, like a big tomato, pork chop for me is a oh, yellow awesome. one, but it's a yellow like beef. And, um, when I grew them last year in the taste test, I've been a bit funny about them because I've grown some pretty tasteless yellow tomatoes before. Not mm. jelly, like revolting tomatoes, but just ones that didn't have a lot going for them. And so I kind of undenied about this one and we put it in the taste test and it was like the most outstanding flavour of any of the big ones that we that we grew. It was fantastic. Jess, I haven't nice. got a pen. Please remember to tell us that. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I'll have to get some of them because I'll it'll be gone and... That's the one I haven't really got is like a nice because I used to get, and I think they were just from a normal like one of the big ones. I used to get a like a, a grafted beef tomato, and they were like, but they stopped doing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were like, oh, JB, look, he's got, he's, he's, he's doing, he's got something. I've got I've, he, one second there. What? What's it's a bad one. This is my over. I've just suddenly remembered this was my overwintered orange accordion. And it's gone absolutely horrible. It's the, I think it's got a disease or something. In, like, um, sure, it's a GB because I can't really see exactly I've what... Bring my, yeah. I've got to bring myself closer because the camera wants to focus on my face. Oh, it has. see it's, yeah. it's gone kind of purple and gross. It, but it, might... has, it has a new growth on top. Yeah, the growth on top doesn't look so bad, but the, the, the stem and everything looks quite blemished. Mm. Does it not need just... Because that surely must be the same compost that you've had for... Yeah, well, the problem five is I'm years, a bit scared months. of transferring this to anything else. It looks a bit blighty to me, so I'm going to keep it on its own, but I probably should repot it. That's a good repot it, see if it survives. Or but you were just saying about off. big... Cut yeah. the top off and put it in a glass of water and reroute it. I did I did wonder about that. Yeah, I might do yeah. that. Um, but yeah, you talking about yellow, this orange accordion, it just reminded me. 
Sorry to interrupt. No, no. Mate, I, Audrey, I'll be honest, I didn't think I, uh, the orange accordion were like super tasty. I you didn't know? either. Uh, all right. Mm. Great. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, they were um, they were a little disappointing. Mm-hmm. But they look cool. Would, uh, I wish you could just grow them to look cool because they're incredible. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought they were watery or there uh-huh. was just something about them. Yeah. Not, uh, I mean, like you see it, and, and especially the image from Baker Creek Farms, it just, you go like, whoa, ho, I'm yeah. that bad boy. Do you know what I mean? But one out of a hundred that they grew is probably the one that made it on the seed packet. Mm hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, mine were all like kind of ugly and scarred, and like you know what I mean, <laughs> all like big scars I, down I the side. Great, but I wish they tasted like they look. Uh-huh. See, so, yeah, I've forgotten Jess's one already. Jess, what was that? Pork one? chop. Pork, pork chop. chop. How can you forget a tomato named pork chop? It's the most <laughs> out there, out there name ever. Jamie, I'm juggling so it. many yeah. things here, yeah. Jamie. I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm juggling not oh, actually. Jess, what are you just, doing? What's t- tomato sowing are you doing? Are you are you are you done or? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't started yet. I I kind of made. I've got three sections to grow tomatoes in this year. I've got space for seventeen in the polytunnel. Um, there's possibly going to be a bit of space in the greenhouse if I've got if I just can't quite bring myself to not sow something. Um, then I'm going to grow all the blight resistant ones outdoors so as many blight resistant varieties as i can find i'm going to stick outdoors and then some other like cherries i'm going to grow in the garden here um we've grown tomatoes in the garden here like the the last couple of years and where things that the allotment have all got blight i mean i'm touching touching wood they haven't got blight here because we're in quite like an urban built up space there's not a lot of other people growing tomatoes around the place um so i'm hoping that i'll be able to get, get away with get away with that here so I've kind of probably got space for about 30 varieties, but um, I've got 92. You've got 92. Well, I'm, I'm missing the figures are coming in far too fast. You've yeah. got 92 tom- places for tomatoes. No, I've got 92 tomato varieties. 92 packets of different seed. <laughs> Jess, or, Jess, or do honestly. you mean you've sown them? No, no, I haven't sown them cripes. Okay. I haven't sown any tomatoes yet. I'm I'm struggling to kind of whittle down. I've got some key ones that I know I want to grow. And then and then some which I'm thinking actually I've either grown them before and they weren't amazing, so they're just like straight off the list, or um the reviews I've read of them like haven't been that great. So they're in the bucket pile sort of thing. And then there's this whole section in the middle of stuff that I have got no idea. So it's like potluck what I'm gonna sow is the, the middle ones. Jess, what's your like method for like whittling these out? Do you know, do you make lists like yeah. in the dead of, in the dead of winter? Are you are you one of those like list makers? Right, I'm gonna you know what I mean just to keep the kind of garden and feel the vibe. Yeah, going. I do. I I've got to admit to being quite partial to a spreadsheet. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, something I don't admit to very often. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> there's quite a few spreadsheets around, but. Yeah, I've got and, them so that I've got all of the all of the varieties that I have, and then there's a tick box, and if I tick them, I know they're ones I want to sow, and then they automatically populate a different list so that <laughs> like so I can see what I am going to sow, and then I've got like search terms for in the description, and if I put like excellent in it, it also gets populated into the yes pile, so it kind of goes goes around in circles, but. And with, you know, because you've got that many, and you you sound like you're going to eventually whittle down to the excellent quite a few as well. Does mm. that end up with just like say one plant of each, or would yeah. you have like say four or five? You... No, it's always only one plant of each. Wow. Right. See, that's because I mean, like you see, you could get a lovely tomato and you know you know, you know when you see your, your salads and you gri- drizzle olive oil on and that you're going to run out of this lovely tomato and might well, i don't know i i mean i find one plant gives loads and and if i do have any excess i'll probably sow two of each if if neither seeds germinate they've kind of written themselves off the list like unless it's something i'm desperate for that i'll re-sow generally they're like well, sorry, that was your choice, tomato. If you didn't want to come up, <laughs> so 
Uh, but then any excess, like if I do get two, I'll give some to Johanna. Um, other people on the plot are always interested in like different tomato varieties. And then anything excessive will go in the back garden. So, so I've, I don't know if I've missed this, Jess, just with Kate. How many seeds will you sow of each? I'm interested two. in this thing. How many seeds will you sow of one variety? Each, each variety I'll sow two seeds um, with the aim to keeping one. Um, but if they, like I say, like unless it's something like pork chop or um, Brad's Atomic or Japanese Black, like if, if they didn't come up, I'd probably re sow them because they're like the ones that I, I must mm -hmm. have. Um, but everything else, if it doesn't come up, it's its problem. Are, are these Japanese Black ones the ones you told me last year? You know, the. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the really heavy coin shape, coin yes. purse shaped one. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's one of your big definite ones, is it? Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot then, Jess. If there was one <laughs> tomato and you could only sow one variety, which one would you pick? Bang, stop that dead. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I'm torn because previously it would always have been the Japanese black trefelli or trefle, whatever you want to call it. Um, it would have always been that. But last year... Um, there was the problem is is that there's a bit of like controversy over it because i thought it was alice's dream was the was the tomato um that it should have been and i've looked up and half the pictures of um alice's dream look exactly like the tomato i had they're quite large they're slightly flattened in shape with a very very pale yellow bum and then like that purple top and the flavour was like the finest tomato I've ever eaten in my life. It was just outrageous. Um, but then half the photos that I'm looking at online of that don't look like that at all. They're like got a much more that. like a red blush and they're much rounder. So, and then I looked up um, that it came from, supposedly it was um, bred from Sartre Rolois. Rolois, you know that one? R O L O I S E. Oh, so it's like a variant of that. Supposedly. And then somebody told me that that was an even better flavour. So I've got I've got that one on my list this year. And if it if it is even vaguely like like that one that I had last year, that's gonna be my favourite. Wow. Is it an F one, Jess, is it? Or, or... No. Right. So... Right. But um, my tomatoes at the end of last year, normally I would kind of keep a good prime specimen, some seeds from it at the end. But the last lot of my tomatoes um, all just weren't that great. Like it tailed off quite a lot towards the end of the year. And then um, I didn't, didn't really save enough seeds. So, and I just ate them before I thought about it. <laughs> so, what are you going doing that for? I know. <laughs> after after all that great. work, all them spreadsheets. <laughs> Normally you just like smear some on a bit of kitchen roll, you know, and you're in the kitchen just to save for next year, even if it's just backup. Didn't do it at all. Nothing. So, yeah. Audrey, what's your process then? Because Jess is, is fascinating just with the amount. You know what I mean? What's your process? of like oh, or Deciding what I'm going to grow. Yeah. And how many varieties? Um, well, I start out with this great thought that I'll grow one of each and I'm limiting myself to 12. And I always end up planting at least 36 plants <laughs> of uh, tomatoes. Um, yeah, my process, sometimes I just throw it against the wall and see what all sticks because they're all some, and some I do like the orange accordion. I grow that just because of the novelty of growing mm -hmm. something that looks so contorted. Um, but this year I really, I really, really am trying to keep my, my, uh, eyes not bigger than they need to be. So I'm really pulling in this year on cherries, smaller tomatoes, a couple of beefsteaks. I haven't grown beefsteaks in a long time and just a few for sauce because I have so much tomato product canned and waiting like I don't really need a lot, so. Um, that's a that's a you know what I mean that's a, a you've achieved not, Nirvana. 
Do you know what I mean? Not, or not, do you, like, not a lot and not wanting a lot are two totally different things. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting a sense of deja vu, Audrey. I feel like yep. we've heard you say I this. Know. <laughs> and you were, I think we're still going to always have it. <laughs> but I've decided we're going to throw a garden party this year, like uh, mid to late July. So I'm really, I'm also having a whole different thought process on, you know, I love tomatoes. They're not beautiful plants. Hmm. I don't no, know if that's JB. Fair. No, they're not the best looking plants. Come on. I, I just... quite like them. A pepper plant looks so much better. Well, I'll, I won't disagree. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, no, pepper. I said it at 25 minutes in. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're, a much, they're a lush plant. Tomatoes, depending on how they're growing that year, can look a bit weak and spindly and... So I'm, I'm just gonna, having yeah, thoughts. I'm going to agree with Audrey there, especially, like, I found... Brad? Yes, it, yes. They're, they're, they're an ugly looking the tomato. Ugly, ugly Do you mean they're a yeah. spin? And you think there's like they're not going to do a good crop, but they do a good, amazing crop. They do a great crop, amazing flavor. But yeah, so I, and I'm also moving all my tomatoes this year because the bed they've been in <sighs> a long time. Uh, they just did not. They did not do well last year. So time to move them. And uh, you're contradicting yourself there, Audrey, because you've got that you've had an amazing crop of tomatoes, you've got too much many tomatoes to eat, but they didn't that's make true. that's true, you know what I mean? But I contradict myself, but they didn't, <laughs> they didn't flourish like they could have. But I have, I've ha I have plenty of uh mm -hmm. haul from it, yes, plenty of tomatoes, plenty, plenty. So this year, I'm going to do a few beefsteaks and keep them smaller because. Part of it is I want to serve food at the garden party that came out of the garden. Nice. So, you know, cocktail tomatoes are going to be better sized to maybe work with. No one what? wants to eat a tomato sandwich at a garden party. Oh, my gran used to make tomato sandwiches, you know what I mean? Just two slices of bread, tomatoes, bit of salt. Bang. There you go, Tony. Oh, man, the memories. Yeah. God. You know, I had my first one two years ago. I never right. had a tomato sandwich, and wow, game changer. Well, I remember me, me gran as well, you know, she used to, like, cut, like, me granddad was the, the gardener, used to, you know, bring the tomatoes in. She would, for, her, like, a dinner, she would just have a plate with tomatoes cut on, and then she would get the salt cellar, because she lived in, like, 90-odd. She'd get the salt cellar and go, and it was silence. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, this, like, total silence. So, like, and I'm like, and this little... Like pyramid of salt <laughs> grew on the side plate. Do you know what I mean? And it was wow. just like still there. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know if she kind of seen how big she could get this pyramid. And then that was like, you know, she'd dip in and dip in, and that was a, uh, you know wow. what I mean? Nice. Uh, just yeah. I always remember that, you know, like talking about it. Like, she wouldn't say anything, and it was just like, mm. go on, with your pyramid. That's funny. There's a question, and JB, do, do you do that? A lot of salt on tomatoes and or not? Oh, or... yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to eating. Um, I thought you were asking about the process, which is why I shake, just started shaking my head, because I don't have a process. I did that in my last video. I literally, I just got the seed packets out that I had. I, no, I had... You, did a, you did a good, you did a good oh. process on the video. Thanks, Audrey. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you talked through your logic on why I'm yeah. growing certain things. Yeah. No, I, so... thought, I thought you did a great job. Oh, that's nice to hear. Around Christmas, I got rid of all the ones. Um, I just, out of my seed box, I got rid of all the ones I didn't want to grow again um, that were just, you know, like four or five out of ten would not grow again kind of thing. Everything else I just left in the seed box. And then when it came time to plant them, I just got them all out. And it's just it's just vibes, you know? It's just seeing what I fancy growing. Um, I did have some thought about not growing too many beefsteaks and trying to do a few more cherries this year. But it's always the salad tomatoes I find that, or the, those kind of medium, the black moon sized ones I have loads of that I want to do. You know, the brads, I'd put those in the same the same category, those kind of salad tomatoes, medium sized ones. There's a lot of those that look really, really good. So um, yeah, a few more cherries this year. Um, Apero is the one that really stood out to me. I saw that one. Have you ever tried that one, Jesse, or anyone? No. Apero. It was advertised on Chilton Seed as the best tasting cherry tomato on the market. Ooh, which is that's big. quite something to live up to. I was going to say, speed. that's a big build-a-fill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
JB, what, what is your what is your favourite tomato, JB? You know, because like you say, you're a chili chili boy through and through. But I don't know the the best one I had last year was um so bittersweet. It was the the indigo blue chocolate that Audrey kindly sent over, and the plant looked weird. The plant looked a bit sick. Um, it didn't look quite right. It looked a, it didn't look like a Brad's, but the, it looked different in the same way that a Brad's can look different. Um, and it gave me like three tomatoes. <laughs> so there was definitely something wrong with that plant. But they were the best tomatoes. Yeah, and I don't know good. if it's just because there were only three of them. <laughs> and maybe it was like a seven out of ten tomato. But because there were only three, it kind of elevated it. You know. But they were really, really good. One of those kind of... It had like a richness and a complexity that I don't think I'd ever tasted in a tomato before. And I was gutted. Do you so get that? I wonder, Jess, I don't know if you are Audrey... Do you get like a spindlier plant with a, a like a heirloom plant, or is that just the the way it comes? You know what I mean? I'd... I I think an heirloom is going to be more difficult to grow because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and... it's not resistant to anything. It's just mm-hmm. been around forever. But the flavor of the tomato, you cannot, you can't beat it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I almost just resign myself to go. I'm not going to get a lot. But the ones I get are going to be so good yeah. that, and you're never going to get those in the grocery store ever. Mm-hmm. That taste like that. So I resigned myself that it's it's going to be poor production. But we really got good. Um, we got some about a month ago, you know, from and I think it was like Costco's, and they were the size of like a Shirley tomato, and they were in the Costco fridge. <laughs> and it's just like it's like hard to describe how bad a taste it is compared to what you can grow like say Audrey, you know, you sent us over those black strawberry ones. The the difference of a like a, a, I, a I nice... can't eat tomatoes that aren't like it was just line. oh man, it was just once you taste that you it does can't... ruin it. Mm-hmm. There's they're yeah. mealy and horrible when you buy them in the store in the uh-huh. winter. Yeah. Even it was a nice color. No. You know what I mean? It was this like flaky red color. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. think it probably cost a little small fortune as well. This bag of some orders, you know what I mean? Shipped from wherever, you know what I mean? And they've probably been grown wherever undercover, anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? But on the kind of timers and, and lights and everything. But they're a really yeah. pallid, pale, pale red, aren't they? It's awful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're almost pink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Not like, not like it's supposed to be pink. Like, right, exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. The only ones I can buy are the little teeny, uh, the little teeny cherries that you get. I don't know. They're they're probably from somewhere warm too, but they're the only ones I can buy in the store, and they're usually like in a little pyramid domey kind of thing, that I can I can even stomach in the winter. Because they actually taste like they were grown somewhere uh, yeah. with sun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mind you, you know, that, if yeah. the amount of tomatoes we eat, I'd have to have a you know like a commercial polytunnel to kind of keep in with heat all year round. Because the amount, you know, every night we have like a a huge big bowl salad, you know, like onions, tomatoes, let you know, all different. Even just for feeding two, we now. You know what I mean? Like the tomatoes are like it's it's this glut that comes, and then it's over. You know what I mean? And, and unless you're like Audrey, that's kind of preserving and everything. It's just like that. But preserved is even different than a fresh tomato. <laughs> oh yeah, there's right. nothing like a fresh tomato. Mm-hmm. And, and I didn't realize as we're talking, I have, gosh, I probably have fifty pounds of tomato in a freezer downstairs from last year. Right. That need to be dealt with. Before this year oh, starts no. up, okay, fifty pound. Do you know what I mean? It's like which isn't hard once you're, you know, fifty pounds of tomatoes. I mean, it sounds like oh my goodness, so much. It's not like fifty pounds of lettuce. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, Audrey, yeah. what would you do? What would you do then? You know, if everyone's got, you know, for future reference, fifty pound of tomatoes in the freezer. I think I want to do. It. What would you do with it? Well, I have way too much pasta sauce right now, so I wouldn't make that. <laughs> um, I think probably a chili base. Uh, so then, yeah, so that's ready to roll. Maybe um, some bruschetta. 
Mm. So, yeah, there's a couple of things that I'd really like to have jarred up. Oh, so you'd even pull them out? See, because we would normally pull them out and make a, say, a bolognese sauce and eat the right. bolognese sauce there and then that night. So you oh, would no. pull yours out of the freezer? I'll make pull it a all out. Yes, I'll pull it all out and can it at the same time because it's much easier to just do it all at once. Right, oh, yeah. right. If they were coming in hot and heavy there in the summer, you just can't. That's a great expression, but tomorrow, these tomatoes are coming in hot and heavy. They are, <laughs> and, you, you know, and you got to be out in the garden a lot in the summer, so you can't always. So that's why there's a freezer. Mm -hmm. Jess, have you got a sneaky little recipe that you can do with tomatoes, or, or mean, do you just eat them all at the, the polytunnel? <laughs> basically, I just gorge myself in the polytunnel, but the... Uh... I just think of those really like pallid, nasty tomatoes. I say nasty. That's not right. They're just nothing compared to like a proper tomato. The only I, I do buy them, but I have them grilled. I really like grilled tomato with things. And if you grill them and put enough salt on them, they sort of they regain a bit of their life. <laughs> but eating them just like chop because you know what? I was just thinking when we were talking about cherry tomatoes, when you were talking about cherry tomatoes, like that's one of the things that, that deciding on which cherry tomatoes, because when I have sliced tomatoes, I tend to eat like that one tomato on its own, you know, slice it up, a bit of mozzarella, the rest of it. With the cherry tomatoes, it's all about just like cutting them in half and having them all together. So I always have like garnet, which is the really, really dark, dark red one, which tastes fantastic. And then uh, green doctor, that's the bright green one. And it's just a like, bit more acid that kind of counteracts having sun sun gold which is then super sweet so like having them all together in like a big jumble with just a bit of salt and olive oil on i like, can't beat it in fact listen listen i'm coming i'm, Audrey, I'm flying I know. Audrey, i'm flying over to this garden party and then i'm going to call the jesses on the way back home right for a, a tomato okay. salad there as well jb are you coming with us yeah oh yeah i'll be there I'll bonnets be there. are welcome nice big <laughs> nice big uh, hats are welcome <laughs> So, Audrey, are you just, is everything coming from them two garden centres re regards your tomato seeds and have you getting them from, like, Baker's Creek and I forget the other oh, name. No, oh, no, I, I go to about a dozen different companies. Right, right. Yeah. Baker Creek just happens to be the one that will mail to the UK right now. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why um, most of what I send is uh, Baker Creek. What I should have done, mind you, Audrey, is actually sown those, and I haven't done the Brad's Atomic, because I think they're a little bit... They're a long for me, like a, in the UK, anyways, like a long season. Yes. So, you know, maybe I definitely, you know, I just wanted to kind of get a video. See, that's the thing. I want to get a video out before, you know what I mean? And then it's timing for a video, which kind of halts you. But I think now it's like middle of March is a great time for tomatoes. Anything? Yeah. Oh yeah. Jess, when would you when would you kind of think right? That's in. There isn't enough time left now for a tomato. When would you down south? When would you say, I I can't sew anymore. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. Um, I mean, it depends on the year, doesn't it? Really. Uh, some years I've really I've got away with kind of quite late. Um, you know, taking the branches off, and they've gone well into November. Other times they're like finished at the end of August. Um, so it depends. But generally, like halfway through March all of april beginning of may i think you could probably get away with well, it well i thought i was going to be good and say my latest was the 18th of april that was the the, the one Is where it? i kind of just got some tomatoes off some were green some were were red so you can well, go it depends what kind of tomato well mm, you yeah. know a beef steak is going to take a whole lot longer than cherries yeah maybe mm -hmm. not with a beef steak but i yeah. think yeah. you could probably get away with a cherry or like one of the like sure. smaller tomatoes at that like beginning of may yep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i agree they grow what's so your favorite big. tomato tony well it again it's still the 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 brads do you know what i mean and uh, the the black um was it tri trifelli is that how you japanese trifelli and i don't think i've got any of them actual seeds but that was a lovely one but i tried it the the brads just like seems to cut through everything it's got that sweetness and it's got that tang as well and it's just that both yeah and everything like the sun goals and all them they're just kind of silly but the sun goals never the bug the bug me 
I get upset with them because they're always split. And even yeah. when you get like a nice full one that doesn't split, that has passed, you know, it hasn't got in my mouth straight away and it's getting home and then it's it's lasted and then you still pull it out and it's still split. Even, at, you know, in the fridge it's split and it's just like... be very splitty. You, you were, won't? Oh, this... Mine were really splitty. Oh, oh that's, split. gold. that's their that's their claim to fame. Mm -hmm. Delicious but splitty. Splitty, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it on the put it on the seed packet. <laughs> I know they just <laughs> caution will split. <laughs> yeah. The one, the well, one that... I've got that I'm quite excited about growing is Rebel Starfighter Prime, which oh, is there's, there's all sorts of new. Plays, oh. aren't they? It's Rebel Starfighter Prime. Rebel Starfighter Prime. Uh, it's like a, a ox heart shaped one, you know, with the pointy bum. Right. It goes up. It's kind of a, a dark red, and it is it called anthracene? That like the purpley color that you get on the tomatoes, yeah. like that that's striped down. So a bit like how Brad's has got that really fantastic, like they almost look like like green and purple stretch marks. You know that like slightly mm. kind of thing. And then um, yeah, just like that. But they they look gorgeous. Great name, and I've heard some great things about how they taste. So. Oh. Um, it's completely like I've never I've never tried it before. It's first year, but I'm looking forward to that one. And will will that only get the the two seed challenge, Jess, as well? Even though it's you know it could be a no, potential. I, I've, got, I've got quite a few to grow because as I know quite a few people who want them off me. So right. once I know that people have been like, oh, can I have one of them when you sow right. them? I know I'll sow some extras. Uh, what a great name cool. as well. Do you know what I mean? Like that's... that is a good name. I thought that would be mm. right up your strata. Totally. I didn't even, Jess. I didn't even know there was. You know what I mean? <laughs> whoever you know, like it's a science fiction fan. Whoever's yeah, I like, know, it's you know what I mean? I got, that's just. I got a load of them from. Um, hang on, where's it? There was a whole load together. I've got some interesting ones this year. I've got um, Surrenders Indian Curry, which is a sour cooking tomato to do which i've never grown one like that before it doesn't get s sweet it's for making like curry bases so that was mm. one i was quite interested in i've got goat bag which i thought was a good name <laughs> it's like a heavy metal bag dark galaxy Man. came with the rebel starfighter prime oh i've seen that one that's a beautiful, it's beautiful. It's stunning beautiful. i've not grown it yet but it, I've, I've never it. grown it but it's absolutely beautiful absolutely gorgeous yeah so i've got loads of ones that i that i'm really excited about this year which is what makes it even more difficult to kind of work out the ones that i know are good mm -hmm. but who makes the cut like well my links yeah. there's a link there for grown logo for these ones but jess where where are you getting all them from then because like you see really kindly sending them to me right like, they're like, I found this fantastic tomato, have a go at this, love, you know, and then I get this like packet of just wonderful, wonderful seeds. But that makes it even more difficult when someone's yeah. given you the seed and said, this yeah. is great. How do you be like, oh, actually, maybe I can't grow that this year because somebody's uh -huh. like it to you with a recommendation. So, yeah. Have you ever grown any, you know, that people have said have been fantastic, Jess, and they've turned out a little bit. You know, I'm talking about Audrey when she sent over, got all hyped up about them orange accordions, and they turned out to be a bit flat. You know I mean? has, have you, has anybody sent anything to you? And you've like grown in thinking, that's just not hitting the mark. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to like go naming names. No name and shame. <laughs> yeah, <it's not. laughs> there, have been, there have been a couple. Um, one that is funny though, but I do think people have like different tastes in what they want out of a tomato. Because exactly, that's the other piece. Yeah. Seem to really, it's like you know, like Brad's has got. It's like the taste stays with you for a really long time. You get that like it's like a depth of flavor. I think it's got the same like meaty flavor. It's sharper, but it's got similar kind of meaty flavor to the um, Japanese black. It's got that same sort of flavor profile. Mm. My like my sister when she's like there's a couple of ones that she's really liked have been much more on like the lighter sweeter kind of right side, I think which that's to me, me they don't do like a great deal for but that's like what she really goes for in a tomato so it's kind of yeah I, I know not, I, I, really hate those green doctor like the green cherry tomatoes they're really splitty by the way as well I have not <laughs> split ones of those. But they're beautiful, like little stripy green chaps, um, and they're sharp and really nice. But some people think that's really. <laughs> that's the technical. JP, I think is one of those people. I'm not sold. I'm not sold. <laughs> I'd try it, but yeah, green tomatoes don't. 
didn't seem they like don't a winner taste for me. like a green you know like when you eat green tomatoes right if it doesn't taste like you're eating an unripe yeah. tomato it's definitely ripe and they're soft and lovely right yeah, yeah. right mm, interesting i did um ferment green tomatoes one time and brave mm -hmm. didn't uh mm. didn't hit the, you know what i mean didn't get through the jar <laughs> just kind of, you know i'll get rid of that jar in the in the, in the fridge melanie don't worry <laughs> i'd like it like a green tomato chutney is an eternal disappointment to me like i just don't like it and every green year, tomato I, chutney yeah i don't like it i don't know what it is about it i think it's the, the tomatoes leave like when they're that unripe they leave like a on your teeth even when they've been chutneyed and right. i'm not <laughs> Even when they've been chutneyed. Have you ever been chutneyed? <laughs> now, see, I just know, no, I like. And I did it with the Roma ones a couple of years, and I've still got, I bet, if I go into the cupboard somewhere in the back, there's a jar there, and I had a great experience with um, doing chutneys as well, so... Well, JP's been probably... quiet on this on this. Well, usually, what usually do you use for chutney? Do to me? I'm talking to anybody, but you too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you as well, young man. Um, you know, yeah. no, I'm just asking in general, what is the normal, you know, is it normally a red tomato that you use? Well, it would be a green. for, for It would chutney for me, or is anything that's left over. That's the way I kind of process chutney. I don't, um, I wouldn't contemplate using red ones because they're still good to go on the plate straight okay. away so i would just go down the the route of and i wouldn't even it was just because i had so many i planted these they're only 50 pence a plant i got them from where i got that clover compost from and they were selling tomatoes he had thousands of different varieties and i thought turn up a garden center and not come away with a plant is a you know it's a it's a heinous crime so i got them planted them they didn't ripen but they had lo loads of these green tomatoes so Boiled Chutney them. it was. Chutney it was. Mm -hmm. Boiled them down. I did try fried green tomatoes last year. I wasn't convinced. <laughs> oh, right. in cornmeal? Yeah. It wasn't huh. it wasn't a great experience. I mean, I didn't know what I was what I was going for, so I don't I don't know, but it was lo lots of recommendations and I'm mm, <laughs> not sure. You need to you need to have a really I good southern yeah. southern cook make them. And yeah, then all of a sudden, I mean, mate, all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, that's what it's supposed <laughs> to taste like." Yeah. Oh yeah, no. When they're made right, oh my goodness. Mm. So what's the many people talk about how great they are, and I was like, mm, "This isn't. Yeah. It's obviously done something wrong here because it's not great." <laughs> what's the basic recipe then, Audrey, for fried green uh, tomatoes? Is okay. I'm gonna say this as a northerner, so. Please, if there's any southern U.S. folks <laughs> watching this, there'll be some yeah. southern. Like, oh. Correction, I know. Please, like, yeah. well, I know that some of them uh, have been soaked in buttermilk, like it's a really thick slice of a green tomato, soaked in buttermilk, and then in a flour cornmeal batter that's been not batter that's been spiced, and then they're deep fried, and um. Wow. And and I've tried them myself too. And I, I feel like, mm, nope. No. And then I was at a cookout once and the person cooking was a parent of the friend that I went to their cookout and dad was from down South. Mm -hmm. Whole different totally different. It's like, why do I grow red tomatoes? That's what mm. I thought. That was the first thought I had, <laughs> but he had all these secret, you know, secret things. And I don't know what those are. And obviously, but, I don't either. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying they're they are when they're done right. Mm, fabulous. Yeah. Jess, Jess, how did you do yours then? Just for 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 to kind of laugh at. <laughs> I mean, essentially, I mean, there was no buttermilk soaking, um, but essentially, it was it was that it was like a spiced cornmeal and flour mix, and they were just like tossed in it and then shallow fried. Um, but yeah, it just it wasn't. And what it did, did it just taste like a green tomato, or did it have like a a, a flavour? Um, I mean, it was it was nice, but I think what was part of the problem was, and obviously this is like technical difficulties, like not really knowing what I'm doing. But 
the cornmeal like on the edges got really lovely and crisp but the moment it came out of the deep fat fry the tomato had too much juice in it so it just went really soggy and like yeah it just wasn't nice whereas i couldn't i could like by just tasting the little crispy edge that stayed crispy you could sort of imagine what it was supposed to be like yeah, <laughs> yeah so mm, if anybody's well... got like the a, a supreme recipe stick it in the in the chat yeah, yes um, i can't uh, wait to see uh, the chat what the yes. chat makes of all this. yes well, GB, I told about my gran with the, the salt. You know, Audrey's done the, you know, and Jess has done a recipe. Can we have your recipe for tomatoes, please? I got nothing. I got absolutely <laughs> nothing, you know. It was interesting, actually, you know, talking about chutney and um, and all that kind of stuff. We just, we eat ours fresh or we make it into sauce, really. That's all. That's just all like, a, like a red, like it's a red nice sauce, like a pasta yeah. sauce. Yeah, you know, you just cook them down. Press, press out the skins and you've either got passata or you add a load of herbs and spices and whatnot, a bit of puree, garlic, and then you've got like more of a pasta sauce. It's pretty simple, but it does the job. Add a um, little balsamic to it next time. Ooh. Mm. I'm telling you, game changer. I can yeah. believe it. I can believe it. <laughs> it so, um, just drop the mic there, Audrey. Yeah, just, it is. I'm game here. changer. A little balsamic. balsamic in your pasta sauce. Mm. When when are you when are you adding that, Audrey? Are you adding that like early on stages or? Yeah, I, I roast my tomatoes with olive oil, a little balsamic, and onions and garlic, and, and then, then just whiz it up. Then just whiz it up. Any any herbs going? I'm trying to get from the masters here. You know what I mean? I'm trying mm. to like. Oh yeah, I, I'm actually gonna. I need to put that recipe on my website. Because I've never had another. You need to tell us now. Never mind the website. Okay. Tell us now, man. It's like we're doing uh, a show for God's sake. There's thyme in it. Uh, thyme, garlic. Uh, try, uh, oh. Obviously, salt and pepper. Any like, on the, oregano? Like, anything like that? Or no oregano. No. We don't know what oregano is over here. <laughs> no oregano. <laughs> 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 yeah, no oregano. Uh, yeah, thyme might be the only uh, actual f leafy herb. Uh, but the balsamic. Right. So is, just in a big tin, roast the whole lot. And yeah. then just, like, so you, I, you're roasting the skins as well. You, like, you're, yeah. and, and they're getting blitzed up and everything. Absolutely. Right, right. And I just use an immersion blender, and it, oh my goodness. What like a stick blender? You know about mm -hmm. that? right? Mm -hmm. I've got it. I've got to interpret it for everyone. If I could, you know if I mean? I could yeah. mail, if I could mail some to the UK, I would, but it's not properly. You've got the address. You've got the address. Princess, I'm not going to be able to send a jar of tomato sauce. <laughs> 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 Tell your husband, put something on. You know, I mean? know. he'll just listen. It's a homemade tomato sauce. <laughs> never believe him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, that sounds oh. gorgeous, to be honest. And yeah, this no, is what kind of, you know what I mean, like the garden, and it, it is doing them, you know, it's it's getting yeah. them tomatoes and roasting them. It's getting them new potatoes and boiling them. You know what I mean? So, we, you know, we've accidentally made a flower special. Uh, not a flower, <laughs> tomato <laughs> special. I know. It really oh, just took I, over today. Can I talk it? about the crazy tomato that is over here now? Go on then. Okay, first GMO seed available for non-commercial growing is available now in the United States. First one ever approved. And it's called the purple tomato. And, okay, it's not like the beautiful, deep, dark, you know, wonderful, rich, nuanced flavors. I don't know what it tastes like. It is purple like neon purple. Right. And it's right. neon purple on the outside and all the way through and it was crossed it was a tomato that was cross not crossed excuse me modified with a uh oh my gosh those beautiful flowers that are like my favorite please tony help me help me uh, 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 ast astas, no. no it starts with an s um it's a flower uh, anyway <laughs> Okay, because it has that purple color. Right. So they genetically modified this tomato. So oh, it would have... It's, um, it says combining the... Sorry, I'm reading on that. No, please. No, no, no. Um, Thank goodness. 
combining <laughs> the genes from the Snapdragon. There you go. Um, okay. and, yeah, bloody <laughs> and additional nutrients are produced in the tomato fruit. Yeah, so so they're kind of selling it as a healthier tomato because it has more an anthocyanins. Mm. Yeah. Which I'm like, I'd rather have like a nice heirloom tomato that has those. But anyway, I th I feel like they look like a gr like they're black, they... black grape. They're weird. Yeah, they look like grapes. <laughs> and do they have a picture of it sliced open? I mean, it mm. is like yeah, it, it looks like purple it's been... on the inside. Yeah. Um, it... So it looks really like a Franken tomato to me. So, mm. Audrey, are these are these seeds you're talking about that you can buy? Are this yeah. is it just a tomato you can buy from the shop? No, you well, you probably could because commercial growers have been able to grow GMO forever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it used to be safe to order from a, a you know a, a residential uh, seed catalog. But now that there's one out, you know, everybody's going to jump on that bandwagon and do these cross pollinate with the ones we're growing. If my neighbor's growing some of these, yeah, how do they react to heirlooms? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of questions about that. Uh, but I think it's they're funny. trying really hard to make GMO sound, oh, it's healthier now. It used to be everybody was scared of GMOs, but I, I just think it's... And the seeds are like two bucks a piece. The dark side of tomatoes. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just even... want, oh, do we really need to do this to our our food system is enough jacked up? Do we need this? Yeah. Right. The picture of the three guys. I mean, it's not just like it's not black like um, Black Beauty. It's like yeah, they look like black currants. There's a picture of the yeah. three guys standing with like. A load of trays of them in front and they look like really tiny men with with big trays of black currants in front of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah really, you wouldn't eat not tomato <laughs> yeah no so really? there's part of me that was curious i almost i thought oh, i'll order some this would be great like content and i thought i don't want them anywhere near my garden so oh, I didn't order. Nice. yeah you're gonna order some so you're not gonna order any or i'm any. not because no. i don't want to encourage it Okay. Well, I was just saddened by that. I thought that's, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it has a bad rap because it has a bad rap. You know, I, sometimes it's beloved. Exactly, the horse is already out of the barn. I think we just have to acknowledge mm. that, and you know, and it cross pollinate it to make it purpler, but don't don't cross it with a flower or genetically modify it with a flower. Anyway. I'm off my soapbox now. No, no, no. <laughs> Good. Get, get, get on it, lass. Get on it. Well, I think, I think that's. We'll, we'll on keep that it. Happy note. On that happy note. On that happy note, Audrey. I think. I think. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. The three years. It's been lovely. Thank you. Yes, this is almost like a tomato special. GB. We've mm -hmm. been there. An hour talking. It just happened, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, carried mm -hmm. away. It's it's so exciting though for the you know hearing all. All of the talk of like recipes. Well, by next week, we'll all have planted <gasps> our tomatoes. Yes. So yeah. we'll really know how the process went. Yeah. We'll have to do some list comparing next week. Yes. Oh, the, yeah. well, then, so JB, by next week, I mean, I'm not saying do it, but will you have sown everything in tomato land? Uh, pretty much. I'm leaving a few spaces in my seed tray for if I have any kind of second thoughts or last minute seed arrivals, right. from friends or that kind of thing. But, wink, um, wink. Yeah, yeah <laughs> most of mine are in. Most of mine are in now. Yeah, and I've got... have one more coming from me. Or, yeah, Audrey, what... coming from me. I, I just haven't got myself into gear to send them. So you've got um, you've got to leave a bit of space. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> yeah, Thank yeah you. you guys have one. The the one that's going to rival um, the sun gold. Tim's Taste of Paradise. I'm so excited. It just Baker Creek doesn't carry it, so I had to sneak it into a card. <laughs> I know, and I told my I told my husband he was taking it up. And I said, customs, I think millions to try to stop this. Carry on. <laughs> we have we have um, a niece and nephew who live in uh, Belfast, so he was sending a card to them for Easter. So he's like, oh, so I'm just sending cards to everyone. Exactly. All our UK friends are getting cards. <laughs> it's a good sure. thing that there's nothing 
publicly available that contradicts what he's written on the card or anything. <laughs> no, no evidence uh, of yeah. otherwise. <laughs> Anyway, so leave, the, the, a little, yeah. leave, leave a little room in your tomato. Cust, <laughs> customs and excise are going to just spot straight away. It's, it's all come, all these seeds are come from Detroit. I can pinpoint it exactly with which, which house. You know what I mean? have fingerprints on this. <laughs> you <are>. Jess, <laughs> did you haven't... You haven't made up your, your nowhere near getting ready for next week then, so you're still... Will no, you have your list confirmed? No, I think what's going to happen is I've got my ones which are like my definites that I know I'm going to sew, which is probably about half of the number I can sew. Um, and it's going to have to be like, you know, when the waiter comes and you're like, don't know what you're going to order until he actually asks you. Um, exactly. It's going to be like that. So I we'll totally agree. I like that analogy. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. That's right. <laughs> 91 different varieties, man. How are you? Do you know what I mean? You've got a, a lot of varieties. 92. Right? <laughs> yeah, 92. 92. Well, is that after you've been to the duds? Is that 92 potentials? No. or is So that... that's no, all okay. of the varieties that I've that I've got C4 currently. You um, need to bin some duds. I would say, pro- yeah. Oh. Sad, Oh, you yeah. have trouble even. You have yeah. trouble even getting the duds. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's dreadful, isn't it? It's dreadful. It's like Nothing even we're I not sure know. sometimes, right? Was it me that year, or was it actually the seed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. It's fair. Right then, let's let's call it a day. There we have honest. We have three minutes left on the clock. <laughs> My eighteen pound digital clock, which when I seen it in on you know, I jumped for it and then when it's come, it's it looks fancy. It's it's there's probably Was one little Hebrew's chip. Picture? Yes, it's not it's all it looks it's plastic. The whole thing's plastic. <laughs> now, do you have an eye watch? Yes, but that's of course it, you do. You can set a course, timer yes. on there, can't you? I can so actually you... just look at the clock. Yeah. Yeah. Look, at the clock. Look, at the clock. Look at the clock! Wow, that's yeah. really old school, yeah. Donna. That is really old school. Yeah. Audrey, where can where can everyone find <laughs> you and your delicious recipes? Uh, Real food comes dirty on YouTube, Instagram, and dot com. Dot com. Ah, there you go. There you go, Jess. Where can we find um, you? Plot thirty seven. <laughs> Same uh, Instagram, YouTube, and plot37.com there you go oh dot com as well oh, oh. I, got the, oh. I just spent a fortune just on that well not a fortune two oh. years i got i paid for tony c smith.com again i've got that bad boy starship sofa and sofa notes <laughs> all in one go really yeah i was, skint, I was unexpectedly skint last week and i couldn't understand why and then i realized that all that all of the the bills for the you know, hosting and everything all came out in one hit, oh. and I hadn't realised. I was like, "Oh, that's where it well, went." I tell you what, what I'm noticing, Jess, there's the um, it was a go daddy. I've got my Starship so far, the whole lot that on a go daddy one, and oh. it, you know when you kind of first sign up, it's like pennies, sure. and then like after your two year pennies, it's like boom, get up there, hundreds and hundreds, of, and I'm like, "Oh, mother sugar." It's like cable yeah, TV, they get work. you in on the deal and then... Yeah, but then you know, yeah. you've got to be like, do I pay 350 quid or do I spend like weeks transferring it over onto something else? It's like, <laughs> I'll just pay the money. I know, like... I know, that's exactly... Yes, you've got to pay, pay the man, pay the... Pay the... Make a JB, where can we find you? You, you yeah. not, he'll not have a dot com. Tell you, you don't, not be spending that kind of money on a bloody dot com. <laughs> exactly. You can find me at Naturally JB on YouTube and Instagram, and there might be a Naturally JB dot com one day. But you've just perfectly <laughs> outlined the reasons for that. Okay, you, that not right, you just sent ten people to go buy that domain name. I know. Yeah, everyone in the yeah, chat can ransom it back to me. In a year. Yeah, and then they will sell it to you for like ten thousand exactly. dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, listen, you three have been lovely. Thank you. Honestly, it's highlighted my week there, just having a little chat and talking gardens and getting excited. Look after yourselves. Thank you very much. Take bye. care. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go.